Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. The other day I was listening, more like reading online to one of those threads that never end. Apparently, there was a, an employer who was looking to hire somebody and that one person came to her super qualified, very well dressed, she was, you know, the perfect candidate for the position. And yet the lady didn't hire her. You may wonder why. Turns out she wouldn't turn her phone off like they requested for the, the interview. She didn't want to turn her phone off in case her mother called to find out how the interview was going. And then her mother called like 30 times during the call and she picked up every one of them. I'm sorry, what? I can, I can only laugh like, really? Anyways, mm. her mom was obviously one of those super protective helicopter parent. So it put me to think, am I a helicopter parent? Do I encourage them to do things on their own enough? I went to look for a definition, some characteristics of helicopter parents. Here's what I came up with. One or two websites that I went to, I was curious as to what exactly characterizes a helicopter parent. Apparently, the first characteristic is a feeling of unnecessary fear on the part of the parent, I guess. And honestly, if I use that, I'd have every reason to shelter my kids just because of certain things that happened as I grew up. Honestly, there wasn't a day that you went to school, you came back home and then nothing happened. Somebody was always kidnapped and most of the time, I guess because it's a small country, most of the time it's somebody that you know. Either ways, we're always affected by what happened. Somebody was kidnapped, somebody was killed. That was the reality of our days. You don't know when you leave your house in the morning, you don't know when you're gonna come back and if all your family is gonna be together when you come back. So anyway, my parents, big time helicopter parenting. Can I blame them? Absolutely not. As a teenager, I always resented my parents' overprotectiveness. I mean, come on. In our senior year, we have, you know, a party to raise money so we can have a graduation party or, you know, prom. Guess who was there? My dad with my auntie and my brother. Um, well, anyway, graduation party. You know, graduated now. I'm 18. I graduated from school. You know, all good. Can I go to um, graduation party slash prom? Can I go? Yeah, we can go. We'll go with you. So here I am going to my graduation party with my brother and my daddy. How cool is that? <laughs> so anyway, I guess out of fear, there's a lot of things that my brother and I didn't really get to experience. And again, I can't really blame my parents for taking the decisions that they took because as most parents do, that's what they feel was the best decision to keep everybody safe. My husband and I, we decided to be a little bit different in that area because Sure, we don't live in the same country, we don't have the same dramatic situations every day, but things are, I can't say the same, but they're probably even a little bit worse with that whole advancement in technology suddenly. There are so many things that as parents, you wanna keep your kids from experiencing. But I also choose to have a more open communication with my kids. Honestly, I feel like having the communication open is my best tool in case of anything. Oof, those times. Another characteristic of helicopter parenting apparently is the instant gratification. And honestly, I did not really need to read about that because I always knew I did not want to give my kids everything that they wanted right when they wanted. I have never done that. And it's not because I'm depriving them on things. We are not. But they do need to know certain things. They do need to learn how to wait. So check out the video about boredom. You know, I, I feel like from what I've read, I feel like some part of that message that I had in that video has to do a lot with that instant gratification. In an example, the bus in the afternoon drops my oldest off at a stop and literally I have to drive less than one minute to be at home. We can walk for 10 minutes to be at home. And meanwhile, he's like, I'm so hungry. I don't think I can make it at home. Seriously? I'm not gonna bring a snack for you because you can't wait one minute to get home and have a snack. Yeah, we're gonna wait. I feel like this also teaches them, especially that I introduce them to having allowances and be able to manage their own money, you know, spend some, save some. Do you need that or do you really want that type of thing? I feel like teaching delayed gratification early on is a really good asset in terms of having a better experience with handling money. The third characteristic that they talked about was dealing with disappointments. Not too long ago, my oldest had a ex weird experience at school where the teacher had to step in and, you know, kind of fix the situation. 
And honestly, the teacher emailed me back and she's like, well, we, I just made sure that she wasn't embarrassed by, with the whole situation. So I, I took care of that. That didn't happen. And I can, you know, offer a special privileges. I'm like, excuse me. I, I really, I appreciated that, you know, she prevented the whole embarrassment part. I made sure I thanked her for that, but no special treatments. Okay, she doesn't need special treatments. What she needs is learning how to manage her time to get her things done on time. Anyway, I feel like they need to learn this type of things early on because it builds character. It builds respect, respect for themselves, respect for others, you know, discipline. Coping with setbacks is also something that we teach little by little. And apparently the fourth characteristic of a helicopter parent is when it comes to self-growth. So the child's self-growth, I guess. I've learned to, you know, step back a little kind of let them experience things, let them figure out how to walk around or find solutions to different situations. So we'll talk about this later, but there is the new thing that showed up nowadays is fighting for toys, you know, because apparently I only have the one toy at, in the house for three kids. I don't jump in and do things for them right away. I let them figure it out. They're smart. Yeah. They have proven plenty of times that they can handle certain things. So yeah, they, they can do it. I don't step in unless safety becomes an issue. So I found myself, my son was almost two and I was still trying to feed it. And that was, that was for me because I didn't want to have to clean up afterwards. You know, so if I feed you the area stays clean, I don't have to, you know, do extra work. But then doesn't it kind of keep them from learning how to eat clean by himself? My youngest now, she's, she just turned one and a half and for a few months now, she's been screaming if you even attempted to feed her. And of course, there's the inevitable mess afterwards, but it's okay. That said, we're not perfect. Definitely not 100% consistent, but we try. We're, we're pretty high up there because those values are pretty clear to us, what we want to instill in the kids. I prefer that they learn that not everybody's perfect, not everything is perfect. Sure, you can aspire for perfection, but you can't sit there and wait to be perfect at one thing before you even try. So, we teach them to try something, does it work, next time you try it a different way, get better at it. And eventually you get, you know, either the result that you wanted or close to that. It's better than sitting there waiting for somebody to hold your hand through every single experience, you know, or nothing's gonna get done. So I guess, no, we are not helicopter parents, at least not now. So we'll talk more about that when it comes party time. So I don't know. Maybe I'll be one of those parents that escort their kids. Maybe I'll be one of those chaperone parents at the graduation party. <laughs> Would that be fun? Um, thank you so much for watching. This is a bit long just because I had so much to say about this. I still, you know, all my notes that I had, I didn't mention everything just because this video is going to end up super long. Thank you so much for staying the whole time and watching everything with me. Yeah, let me know what are your thoughts about helicopter parenting? What other kinds of parenting are there? That, there are many kinds, but that's that's the one that struck mo most with me because I felt like my parents were helicopter parents, but I don't want to be that. So let me know what do you think? Those of you with older kids, please, please, please tell me your secrets. Me need to know. What do you do? On that note, I will see you later. Take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye. <laughs>